I don't know uh, at this point if anybody wants to share the experience. Uh, now that you were, you have you have read about it, you saw it in, in movies, you read it in mag I mean in, in, in books. Now that you are confronted with the reality, the physical thing, uh, we're wondering if anybody will want to share your experience. Of course, when you are sharing your experience, we're gonna put it on video. So anybody who wants to share the experience, Dr. Ma. Or just have anything to say or reflect back. You know, it doesn't yeah, have to be. Yeah, I mean, just as a reflective, how before you got here, the experience you have had, it was sound like to you like a dream, and now you're seeing it, the real thing maybe you want to share. Or uh, just give a reflection. Okay. From now until our baby 10, 15 minutes time when we get the hotel. If you want to, you can come over. Now you will understand, those of you who have seen this dungeon, when you go to the Elmina dungeon on your own, then you will, you will understand why I said that I believe the Elmina dungeons were not built with the slavery in mind. Uh, because over there, they just rooms that were converted into slavery because it means that slavery came to meet. But of course, we don't know the mind of the people because the Elmina dungeons, when they were granted the permission to build, Within eight, six weeks, they had done with the outer layout and went in the, in the inside. Also, the door, I mean, the walls are so thick. If it was not for uh, for, for slavery, why did they make the, the, the walls that thick? So, but what I'm trying to drive here, these are three, uh, two different, I mean, nature of dungeons or categories of dungeons we have. The very underground, not like the female here. The west of the female, the dungeons, it's just like, it's like the female dungeons here in, uh, the west of dungeons in Elmina Castle is like the dun female dungeon here in the Kikipos Castle. And as you realize, there was a tunnel that was blocked. I don't know what we're waiting for, why we are not breaking the tunnel because it's just the entrance of the tunnel that has been blocked. Yeah. Why won't we break it? Yes. And see what they put in there. I'm saying this because in the when we drive, when we drove to through Kumasi, we got to a point and I said this is a call, this is a bank, this is a police station, this is a prison. There was a a fort that was that is Fort St. George in Ashanti. That is the only inland fort that the British built. And before they left, before they left, there was a particular room with an iron gate. And they say, do not enter, danger. So every, do not open, danger. Everybody was just there. But that museum, that, that, that fort now, is now a museum for the armed forces, where they exhibit the uh, enemy artillerists or wherever they try and involve the first and second world war that is the armed forces museum so the military one one director came in he was the director for the play for a while and he said what is beyond this gate that is danger so he started reading about it then looking for a surviving veteran of the british then he found one so he went to London and interviewed the gentleman. At the age of 95, he told him that, no, there's nothing in there, it's just gold, gold ornaments. That is a club. Not that they just, they pick a bronze, a bronze box, I mean bronze papan, and then put in various shapes of golds, raw gold. That belonged to Ashanti's, put it there in boxes and then just sealed it. So he came, he said, this is what is in there. So he got back to Ghana, tried and convinced his superiors, informed the Ashanti king that this is what he has told. So they have to open the door. 
But of course, being taking precaution, that day they were going to open there to make sure it was a Friday, it was a Sunday. People will not be doing work in that area, and they brought in expert bomb experts and medicine to come. They crack open, they, they chop open. I mean, the, with a machine, they open the iron gate, and when they went in, the bomb squad went in first to see if indeed, because they say it's danger, if they were sent to something dangerous. They got there. It was that the gold sitting down there. So maybe. Oh, I'm saying that we need to crack open that, that wall. When you went down to the male dungeon, the end where the gentle, the traditional priest is sitting, did you, did you see him? His back is against a wall. That was a tunnel. That tunnel has been closed. What is in there? Maybe something good is in there. We need to open that door. So, but that, that that's one is, uh, is uh, I'm just saying it. Maybe we need to talk, take the talk further. Somebody may hear us. There is a saying, you know, Africa has a lot of proverbs that the short man's cry is never heard. When they say a short man, that is just, uh, it has two meanings. Of course, if you are a little put in the land of gents, and you are down there, where you are talking, nobody is hearing you because of course, all the sound is out there. Nobody can hear you. But metaphorically, this short man means if you are not in a position of higher, or whatever you say, in people are not minding. Until somebody prominent makes a request about it. So that is how. So we have proverbs. And our proverbs have uh, the simple meaning, the literal meaning, and also the metaphorical meaning. Mostly is a metaphorical meaning. That is why we say, we, 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 we use. And if you know how to speak in Africa, and mostly when they're talking, they interspace it with uh, uh, proverbs. So the Asantis have a proverb they say you send uh, a wise person not a fast person oh go to Cape Coast and do this blah 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 I'm not talking about I'm not we are not talking about moving fast we want somebody that will be able to be go when they go he relates to elders Yansuma Anamwatintin you send your wise child, your me child, not the fastest child. The fastest child will go there and come back, not solve your problem. So, what I'm trying to say is that we need to open that. We need to open that. But my voice is a short voice. It is a very Maybe, who, who is that guy talking, saying that we should open this and is he of any substance? Uh, okay, okay. That is what, and you know in communication, if uh, I do not value you when you're talking, I, don't, I will not pay attention. Me too. You have to value you. When you're talking to somebody who, who, who is of value, then when you're talking, that is the same thing like in adverts. If I'm advertising a clothes, who's gonna buy it? But if a local star, it's advertising the clothes. Oh, this guy! Oh, I'm gonna get, get it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Oh, this, they can make reference, but who is Damba? But we will stop talking. We will keep talking. We know one day somebody responsible or, or respectful enough will pick it up, and then that door will open. Maybe there's something hiding something in there. We need to be able to walk through that one.